Chào mừng các bạn đã quay trở lại với kênh Học IELTS cùng Ailes Thầy là Huy Ở một trình độ cao hơn, bạn đã quen với việc nghe tiếng Anh Bạn có bốn từ để hiểu và điền các câu trả lời ngay lập tức Tuy nhiên, bạn đang gặp khó khăn với các dạng bài Paraphrase hoặc Summarize Bạn không biết chọn từ nào để điền khi đề bài sử dụng những từ ngữ không chính xác như bài nghe Vấn đề nằm ở đây chính là bạn chưa quen xử lý thông tin khi nghe Vì vậy, đừng có bỏ qua bài Listening Test số 9 ngày hôm nay nhé You will hear a conversation between a psychiatrist in the medical center of the college and a new student. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 4. Hello, sit down please. Thank you. Now. You are a new patient, aren't you? Y yes, that's right. Okay, so I'd better get some basic details down first. Right, we'll start with your name. Martin Hansen. Do you spell that S-O-N or S-E-N? H-A-N-S-E-N. Okay, and you're a first-year student? Yes, I am. Study in? Uh, electronics, actually. Ah, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. And your address? Uh, 2805 Hesperian Avenue, Hayward. 2805 and Hesperian. Yes, that's H-E-S-P-E-R-I-A-N. Hayward, H-A-Y-W-A-R-D. And your phone number? 734-246-55. 734-264-55. No, you got the six and the four the wrong way round. It's 24655. Huh? Sorry, right. And um, when were you born? Ah, uh, the 15th of June, 1986. Here in New Zealand? No, I was born in Sydney. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 5 to 10. Good. So, what's your problem? Well, frankly, I wonder whether it is a problem. I get the blues, and it lasts for quite a while. I don't know how to... Yes, we all feel sad or get the blues now and again. Generally, our sadness lessens in time and with the support of friends. However... If the depression leads to difficulty in thinking and greatly disrupts your daily routine, it can be evidence of a psychiatric problem. What do you feel exactly? I always feel sad and worthless. I find it hard to fall asleep and wake up early in the morning. How long has it lasted? Nearly half a month. Do you feel fatigue or loss of energy? Or... You may have lost interest or pleasure in usual activities. Yes, sometimes. At first I thought I could overcome it by myself, but I failed, and then... I'm so glad that you came here. It seems that you are suffering mild depression from your symptoms. Depression? Yes, I feel depressed sometimes. But why would I... Depression may occur as a result of biochemical changes in the body. Alcohol, amphetamines, cocaine and LSD can bring on depression. Those who have a family history of depression usually have a greater risk of depression. Sometimes the worrying changes in life can lead to depression. I see. I had a really bad breakup of a love relationship. It makes me feel hopeless. Do you think I need some treatment? Yes. Antidepressant medications are often used to treat depression, if it is serious. But I don't suggest them at first because of the side effects. 
I suggest psychotherapy, which can give you support and help you regain control. So do I need to come here every day? No, I will arrange counselling sessions for you, which will last 12 to 20 weeks. You come here once or twice each week. The psychotherapy is directed at helping you gain insight and understanding about events in your life, which may have contributed to your depression. With growing insight, you can often learn more effective ways of coping with your feelings and changing your behaviour. What can I do to take care of myself? Well, at first you should do some physical exercises on a regular basis, at least three times a week. How is your food? Do you eat well? Yes, I think so. I eat at my homestay family. Good. Find a hobby or a positive recreational activity to participate in once or twice a week. I know it's difficult for you, though. When you feel it's hard to overcome the depression, come to the counselling session. Remember, ask for help if the load is too heavy to handle. Yes, I'll try. So, when will my counselling session begin? I'm going to arrange that for you. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section two. You are going to hear a radio interview about giving up smoking. First, look at questions 11 to 13. As you listen to the first part of the interview, answer questions 11 to 13. For these questions, there are four alternatives. A, B, C and D. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the correct letter. And now, let's hear what Mr Gold has to say about kicking the habit of smoking. It was connected with wanting to change your life and your desire to become an actor. Is that right, Mr Gold? Um, yes. So, can you tell our listeners a bit more about how you managed to give up? Um, well, I, I enrolled on a variety of evening courses where I found I wasn't able to do the warm-up sessions. Bending down to touch my toes made me breathless. Even though I hated to admit it, the problem wasn't so much my sitting around all the time, but my 15 to 20 a day smoking habit. If I'd been able to limit myself to three or four cigarettes a day, there'd have been no problem, but I was seriously addicted. And I'm talking about waking up at 3 a.m. dying for a cigarette, or, in the days before 24-hour shopping, driving across London at night to buy a packet of cigarettes when I ran out. <laughs> But above all, my addiction meant making sure I never ran out, at the expense of everything else, including necessities. So what did you do? The thought of all my past attempts to give up just wouldn't go away. This was something that had constantly been on my mind, especially first thing in the morning with the chest pains, coughing fits and headaches, not to mention the frequent colds and throat infections. But I couldn't imagine life without smoking. I also enjoyed my life... But the thing I longed for most was to escape the trap of a job I was bored with. I knew what I wanted, and I understood something else, too. This time, I was going to keep my little plan a secret. Now look at questions 14 to 20. As the interview continues, complete the sentences. Write no more than three words for each answer. On the 1st of July, I managed to get through 24 hours without a single cigarette. The next day, I got to 48 hours. Then I aimed for 100, 500, 1,000. Easy. It was my own little private game, and I was winning it. If anyone mentioned they hadn't seen me smoking, I simply said I was cutting down. I had to be sure of success. Eventually, a month passed, and I felt safe enough to come out. <laughs> I'd lost count of the number of hours I'd gone without a cigarette. All I suffered was a couple of bad headaches, and then I was set for my most healthy year ever. Not one single cold for over 12 months. I now realise that the secret of my success was to look upon this as an exciting adventure, a way of helping me to become an actor. And because nobody knew what I was up to, I never once feared the accusation of having no willpower if I failed. With the right attitude, the whole thing turned out to be a lot easier than expected. I finally did get into much better physical shape, go to drama school and become a professional actor.
Very interesting indeed. <laughs> I'm sure we all wish we had Mr. Gold's determination. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Gold. And I hope our listeners will learn from the experience you and our other guests have talked to us about today and perhaps find their own road to success. That's the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section 3. You will hear two engineering students, a woman in her sixth year called Linda and a man in his fifth year called Matthew, discussing the benefits of student work placements. Before you listen, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 26. Hi, Linda. Can you spare a few minutes? Hello, Matthew. No problem. I just wanted to talk to you about temporary work placements. I've never really thought there was a good reason for doing one. I've got some savings, so I don't really need the money at the moment. But I've had an email from the university about a vacancy that looks quite interesting. You did a placement last year, didn't you? I did, yes. In my case, I wanted to find out if I was making the right career choice before I began applying for permanent jobs. I thought I wanted to work in car manufacturing, but I wasn't sure, so I applied to Toyota. What was the application process like? Lengthy. There were a lot of different parts to it. The dullest one was a psychometric test. You know, when you have to answer loads of questions about yourself. And you're trying to guess what's the best thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then there was an activity that we did in groups, which I found really fascinating. Engineers are renowned for being a bit unsociable, but I thought we made a great team. And we had an individual task, too. We had to sort through various business documents and prioritize them. It was just like what you have to do as a student, really, just with different content. What exactly were you doing on the placement? I was helping to design some diagnostic software to identify any waste in the car assembly process. Do you mean waste of materials? No, time. Anything that can speed the process up helps to cut costs. How did the work placement compare to being a student? Was it hard work? Yes, it was. I'd had full-time work before. I've done various unskilled jobs during university holidays, and some of those involve long hours. So I thought I'd find it easy. I was wrong, though. I think when you're on placement, you're always trying to prove yourself. So you push yourself hard to succeed? Yes. But I got a lot of support from my employers. They were always helpful. And then, at the end of the placement, I was given formal feedback. Do you mean on your engineering ability? Well, no. I didn't really need that because we had team meetings every other day. And so I had the chance to discuss technical issues and ask about anything that wasn't clear. The evaluation was about general workplace things, like organizational ability, initiative, that sort of thing. I get the impression you think you benefited from the placement. Well, the best thing is that they've offered me a job for next year. Depending on my exam results, of course, but still. A permanent one? Yes. But apart from that, I learned so much. The industrial environment was much more demanding than the academic one. So my general skills improved. Like time management, meeting deadlines. And on the technical side, I learned new software packages, like MS Project. Well, I think you've convinced me that work placements are worthwhile, but... While you're here, can you give me advice on something else? Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. I'm about to make a start on the engineering materials module and I've got a book list here. Can you have a quick look and tell me what you would recommend? That's if you can remember. Let's see. I do remember some of them. Hmm. Yes, this one. The Science of Materials. I found the subject quite hard generally, but this book is very accessible, so it suited me. 
It doesn't cover everything, though. What about this one, then? Materials engineering. Oh, yes. I do remember that. But it's a bit out of date now, isn't it? Unless it's a new addition. I don't think so. But what I liked about it were the pictures. They really helped to understand the descriptions. It's useful just from that point of view. Let's see. What else? Oh, yes. That one there. Engineering basics. I think out of all these, that's got the widest coverage. But I've looked at the contents page and it hardly mentions nanotechnology. Yes, you're right. The evolution of materials does, though. It's a recent publication, so it covers all the latest developments. It's a bit thin on the 1960s, though, and that decade was quite important. Well, it sounds as if they all complement each other in some ways. I don't suppose you can lend me... That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section four. In this section, you'll hear an introduction about the tutorial courses of the physics school. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to Orientation Week. This is the physics school session. And we'll welcome Professor Smith, the head of the school, to introduce you to the tutorial system. Welcome, Professor Smith. Thank you. You may have noticed life at university is totally different from that of school. For you, tutorials are an important part of the teaching program. Tutors are the primary contact between undergraduate students and the school. A tutor is the student's personal tutor as well as their academic tutor. Tutorials for physics undergraduates consist of six students who meet each week with their tutor for at least 50 minutes. For radiographer students, tutorials will normally consist of a group of about 10 students who will meet fortnightly with their tutor for a period of at least 50 minutes. In the first semester, the tutorials are during weeks 1 to 11. For semester 2, they are during weeks 14 to 24. Everybody involved is expected to be present and on time, and the tutor will also be available in week 12 and 25 to discuss problems that arise during revision. But attendance by students is optional. Now I'm going to introduce to you the stages and activities of the tutorials. The induction period is from week 1 to 3. I know that a significant minority of you experience culture shock during your first few months at university, and the important function of this stage is to identify students who are having difficulty integrating into the academic program. In particular, tutors should check your attendance of lectures, tutorials, laboratory sessions, and this sort of things. Tutors also help you tackle work in a systematic and effective manner. Stage 2 begins from the fourth week. Some tutorials of this period are to be devoted to discussion or going over the students' lecture notes, but approximately 50% of tutorial time is to be devoted to coursework. You should finish the weekly homework assignments of two hours duration with at least 50% involving written work. At least eight homework assignments during the year should involve answering problems set on coursework. The written work collected by the tutor should be marked within a week of handing in, and generally the assignments should be graded. The third stage starts from week 8 till the 10th. During this period, math and four core physics programs are included. The majority of tutorial time should be devoted to work which supports the lecture programs and laboratory work. At least 60% of homework assignments should involve written work. The assignment may involve writing an account of, or notes on, a specified range of topics. The written work should also be marked and graded. Short oral presentations by students should be included. They are possibly on general physics topics or essays. The last week's personal development planning is a structured and supported process. The primary objective for PDP is to help you to become more independent and confident, self-directed learners and encourage a positive attitude to learning throughout life. 
it is undertaken by yourselves to reflect upon their own learning, performance and achievement, and to plan for their personal educational and career development. Finally, if without evidence of good reason you miss more than two sessions during a semester, or if the tutor is not satisfied with your progress, the matter must be immediately referred to the programme director who will normally issue formal warning, verbal and written. This will inform you that your place at university is under threat of withdrawal if no improvement is made. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Các bạn cần chú ý, mỗi ngày lượng nghe ít nhất từ 30 phút đến 1 tiếng hay 2 giờ. Các bạn thấy video IELTS Listening Test ngày hôm nay như thế nào? Có bất kỳ câu hỏi hay thắc mắc nào cần giải đáp hay không? Đừng quên comment ngay phía dưới để thấy biết ý kiến của các bạn nhé.